partner, Joe Cool. What's up, what's up? All right, been a week or two, a couple weeks, right? Yeah, like two weeks. Oh, okay, so we back. Um, oh, yeah, you know this week, I spent the whole week at the, the NBA Players Association Right. The players union, they do a basketball camp at Basketball City. So mm -hmm. I always get scholarships to bring kids. So I took about 15 kids there. And, you know, they, they go through all the drills. And, you know, it's nice because they, um, you know, they have some of the NBA players come through, talk to them, you know, stuff like that. So that's always a good thing when they're giving back. You recruited anybody? You know, anybody? in that sense. Huh? You recruited anybody? <laughs> nah, nah. No, no player tampering, no nothing? Nah, none of that. Now, even though, you know, it's funny. You know who was there when I mean, you speak of that? And I, if I got a chance to, because I had to do an interview right after him mm. for the people that sponsors, you know, the, the admission uh, that I get. And um, damn, from Denver, they got traded to Indiana that I said we wanted before we got DiVincenzo. Damn, what the hell is his name? Damn, the guard, damn, Brown, Bruce Brown. Oh, Bruce Brown? Yeah, I said, damn, what an opportunity to tell him that. Remember I was saying before, mm -hmm. he would have been, a, even though I'm glad we got DiVincenzo, that, that Bruce Brown would have been the type of guard, like he could score from any angle on the court mm -hmm. and he don't never stop coming. Mm -hmm. So his opportunities, even for us, would have been greater had he even stayed in Denver. He just priced himself out of Denver because, he, you know, his talent. Right. But yeah, but I thought that was, um, and I and I probably still could have got it, but, you know, you don't want it with all the kids running, mm -hmm. you don't want to seem like a groupie. Mm -hmm. But I said, if I could have got a hot take, for next morning coffee, that would have been nice, you know. So maybe I'll start being a little bit more aggressive in those <laughs> situations. <laughs> um, but what we're going to start with today is, uh, and these are things that already been in the news, but being that we haven't been here, uh, one is Josh Hart. We're gonna, we'll title it, um, what was Josh Hart's contract? How does that affect IQ? Because, mm. uh, you know, in August, you know, Josh Hart, he took the, he waited so that Knicks would be able to have money to try to sign some people. Mm -hmm. So in, in August, he's going to sign a, a four-year, $75 million contract. Mm -hmm. Now, that's fine because that's only comes out to about 18, 19 a year. And he definitely worked that. But now IQ had went on record before saying he wants a big, huge contract mm -hmm. when his time comes, which is this year, next year. Mm -hmm. So... We know with the new collective bargaining agreement, there's going to be more money, but they're still going to be stifling on how teams, how they can load up, because they're really trying to keep teams um, from pairing all these superstars together. Mm -hmm. And I think the last one we probably might see is the one that's now in Phoenix. That might be the last time we see three max mm -hmm. players, and I think Phoenix might even have four. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to start seeing that, you know, next couple of years. Mm -hmm. So now, with that being said, how does that how does that affect IQ? When he wants when he wants big money around when he see what people are getting around the league, mm. and he want to taste of that seven you know them seven figures, so do we like? Well, I think they kind of restructuring these contracts to where you want a hundred and twenty million, right? We're gonna give you a hundred million, and if you hit these goals, we'll give you the twenty million. I think that's how it sounds like they're restructuring it. If somebody got a contract like that. And at first it sounded small until you heard yeah. how much they get if mm -hmm. they make it to the finals. If they, which makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, I don't know if that comes out of the budget. Yeah, it comes out of the budget because if you start, but if that comes if out of the salary cap though. If you, yeah, if it's still your money. If your max players decide to eat up all of your pay, mm -hmm. right? You got four max players between forty and fifty million dollars. Mm -hmm. Three, four max players. That is, that's not going to leave a whole lot of room now. For those twenty-five to thirty-five million dollar year players, even you know, yeah, so you're gonna be you're gonna be loaded up with a whole lot of maybe one or two guys, one guy maybe in the twenties, and a whole lot of guys mm -hmm. in that five and six, because they're not gonna allow teams. They're gonna penalize them for going way over the cap when this new agreement comes out. Mm -hmm. Now there'll be more money, there'll be more money to get, mm -hmm. but if the superstars take it all, then that's gonna leave your team in a bind. So mm -hmm. that structure you're talking about right now. That's, that is good for right now. I mean, I think they'll find a way because if the contracts is going to be like, what's the name from the Celtics, Jalen Brown's contract, I could see them taking a $10, $20 million cut to get another player, or even a $100 million cut. You can see who's taking a $10, $20 million cut. I could see them taking that cut. If they really want to No, play, I mean, who's taking it? Because Jalen just signed for 60 I'm talking about what, what's his contract? It's like 200 like 100 something. 300 million. 304 million. So if he wanted... 
LeBron to come there and you win the three matches, you don't think he'll take the hundred million dollar cut? Well, he are well, but right now he took. It. I'm saying, I'm just saying, like yeah. these players, what they trying to stop players from doing is taking their friends that superstars are putting them on the same team. Well, so, oh, yeah. I don't want to go nowhere else. Yeah. So they they make an example of uh, Damian Lillard now. Like, no, you just can't do that. Like, they sent out the email saying, oh, he's saying he's not going to any other team. If he go there, it's just going to be like. And he, and he, and he, and he, and it's funny that that's a whole other story. We got to get to that one because that's mm -hmm. an interesting story. I saw it the other day. I think that's what they're trying to stop. Yeah. For real. I don't think they care. Well, about that Dame Miller cat. one, I, I, remind me, please. We need we need mm -hmm. to touch on that because that's interesting. Um, But we're well, we talking about the salary. Well, we're going to go back to how it affects IQ because mm -hmm. IQ wants to get paid. And now the Knicks run the risk of do I do I cut my losses? I I won't be able to pay IQ that mm. because in the bottom line at the end they're still trying to get a big fish, mm. right? So in the next year or two, do I give them that money or do I still hold on to that money mm. and my picks because we can't pay everybody, right? You kind of knew you had to pay Hart because he just changed the whole dynamic of your team. Mm. And even though IQ do the same thing for us. His playoff performance now just leaves a little well, bit of a slight taste. Because we don't get like his rights or nothing. Yeah, like well, I don't know. I don't know if we get his. I guess he's been there long enough for his bird rights, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not a matter of who pays him more. Mm -hmm. That's a, that goes into effect with who pays you more. Ours is, is just that: are we willing to give him that much? Well, it depends on how he play. If he play good, then we gotta pay him. Well, he proved no. He proved he should get paid. It's just that now in the pecking order, where are you trying to find a superstar to fit in if you're still trying to keep. Brunson and Randall, and you want to add another superstar. So, mm -hmm. I I think we should pay him if the number's right. Mm -hmm. At the same because at the same time, he, right? He do have to prove now. He got to make up for that playoff performance. Yeah, can you say bigger contract? What? How well, big he think he gonna want that? Like where do he think he, he may? Well, that? in his mind, if if those guys are signing for eighteen, and a lot of the guys that do what he do are getting the 25, 26, he may feel like he deserve it. I mean, if the guys he's getting in, that's that caliber of player, and they're getting 25, okay. But if you're going to be asking for 60, 70, and I'm going to be like, hold on. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, because I'm not actually saying. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know the number. But he ain't asking for no But yeah, if you, if you asking for above the players that's in your caliber, mm -hmm. then you bugging. Now, if you play good, maybe you not bugging. Well, it's just, it's just the playoff performance. Up until then, it probably would be no question. But that's where it counts. But I, but I don't think it's a matter just of him playing good. It's a matter mm -hmm. of he's never going to play good enough to be that superstar. And then so it's going to depend on how they're well. they're saving money for the superstar, mm -hmm. that's what I mean by If Devin Chester play affected. well, who are they paying, him or him? That's another, that's another dilemma. That's why I say, what do the Knicks do? It's not do? a dilemma for the Knicks. You, it's more it, a dilemma it, for... It kind of it kind of is because you have to start telling, like, we drafted you. And you have to start sending that type of precedent. Like, this is the longest we held on to guys that we mm. either drafted or got during draft day trades. Mm. This is the longest many guys we that I could remember that we've ever kept this long. Mm. <laughs> so, and if you're starting with uh, Neil Aquina and Knox, because those are the first two, mm. you know, they're gone. But imagine if you go back to them. If, well, we know we can't have Neil Aquina. Knox, I wouldn't be surprised if he ever came back. Yeah, but we, but we got to start showing teams that, you know, we're willing to, you know, Die with our, with our players. Yeah, I think that's something we're just going to have to see. Because how does Golden State keep their players for so long? We got to see. Because they kept their core, and then they just built around their core mm. with mediocre contracts. Who who actually filled a need? That's how Golden State was able to do it. Like, you're not coming in here if you can't shoot. Mm. You're not coming here if you can't run the floor. So, and you're not coming here thinking you're getting major minutes. Yeah, but, but, but quickly is this going to come down to that Tim Duncan effect like are you going to be like tim duncan and just take the pay cut until it's your turn to be re-compensated or are you gonna that's what all these players are going to do if you what you're saying is true that's what the players going to have to decide do i take the pay cut so we could have four five max players yeah play. well eventually i think a lot in the next three years i think a lot of players i think good names are going to have to take pay cuts because the superstars i think the, the market just dictates that they get paid like you know, I, I you know I, I I agree with Stephen A. Sometimes, but most of the time I don't. Mm -hmm. But this time I, I understand what he's trying to say. Jalen Brown is not that kind of player, but the market dictated his sixty I mean, million. Every I feel like every what two or three years a player look like he's not supposed to get that money, but it's probably because his contract was the first one to be 
Dope. I forgot somebody else. Remember who, who got that big old contract? We was like, how the hell did he get that? Yeah, well, that's been a lot of people over the years. It was like a player like, we was like, ain't no way he got that contract. Well, look, if, if, if Brown called me for shoot, one give me, day, give me a, give picture me a two that. day. <laughs> <laughs> shit, if, if Brown signed for 60, right, what do you think uh, Tatum going to have to sign for? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but now Tatum, now you have to pay Tatum mm. more. I saw one thing about 336. Um, cause I was just, and before Brown signed, I was just telling somebody this week that, um, in the next couple of years, we're looking at a $70 million contract. Somebody mm -hmm. going to get. So now if he signed for 60 and he's not even top 10, imagine what, you know, somebody. if, if Giannis has a contract that's coming, mm -hmm. somebody that you know, that has the age still, you know, that's coming, what they're going to end up signing for. Even if it's for, even if it's for a year or two. Because when Jordan first signed his $30 million year by year, yeah. that seemed crazy at the time. Man, listen, you failed. I should have been in the NBA. And I missed it. Listen, <laughs> listen, you ain't want to listen. You ain't want to listen. You ain't want to listen. Um, but, yeah, but that's that's just interesting that all these things that's going to be happening to the NBA and the Knicks, we still can't hold, hold, hold on to our chips. We have to really just start making moves. Okay, the we Knicks building. Do something, yeah, we we say we building, the, the and we love our about team. To be on fire with yeah. the Jets stacking yeah. up. Yeah, people taking pay cuts, calling people on the phone. What are we doing? Yeah, like, yeah, we have to make we have to make a move because we can't always keep saying next year when somebody becomes available because history shows that superstars don't just take our money. Mm. So money and picks is something that we've been having for the past few years. And we just, we just not. Yeah, it's almost like money is not it. worth the headache to superstars over here, and the superstars that want to come, the teams don't want. Yeah. Like well, I mean, it's still that thing where I think a lot of these owners don't like the Knicks for whatever the reason. Well, they're not doing business with us in that, but they sure are in the past anyway. You know, like hog tying us when it comes mm -hmm. like look what we give up. We'll give away players for nothing, but we'll take a player and give up everything. Yeah, you know what I mean? We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't get players. And when we send players out, it's almost like here, like Jr. Mm -hmm. Here, go. You know, you willing to give up every forty eight for nothing? Yeah, it's almost. I think we gotta probably talk about that on a on a live or something because it's almost like other franchises are salty that we can have nobody, and people will still come pack out these games. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's never a time where yeah, well, it's, maybe it's, the tickets are more available. But it's the game is still gonna be. Oh yeah, they'll give them it's away. It's still gonna be yeah. loud, and we still yeah. gonna hype up a player yes. that's not that good. Like they the best thing on earth. <laughs> yeah. Well, they'll give them away. They'll give the tickets away before they lie. I remember when we had David Lee. You would have thought he was a superstar the way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next thing we gotta move on to, um, is uh, trade rumor. Now this one I don't know if it's really a rumor. They say the Knicks are talking, um, but this one will be interesting to me. Because they were talking about doing a deal with Golden State, uh, Mitchell Wiggins for Isaiah Hartenstein. Andrew Wiggins? Andrew Wiggins, I'm sorry. Isaiah Hartenstein, Stein, RJ Barrett, and then a 2023 or 24 first round pick. I'll do it. Yeah, I, I, I'd do it too. Because you always got to look at what works for both sides. So mm. I don't know where RJ Barrett works in Golden State because they, Golden State has to have shooters. I mean, maybe um, they try to fill that void of uh, what what's the name was doing. Who's that? Uh, what's that play? I said that was like that's RJ should patent his game after a little bit. Not patent his game, but do more that they just traded. Um, I know you're not talking Jordan about Jordan Poole, but Jordan Poole's a shooter. He can't patent himself after Jordan. I'm talking Poole. about way. Remember when, he wasn't, when RJ wasn't shooting good? I said yeah. you need to shoot better, like Jordan yeah. Poole. Oh, but Jordan shit, Poole go a, to the basket. He was shooting. Yeah, but he if he could shoot like that, it's easy. <laughs> I mean, damn. We'd have no, we wouldn't be getting rid of him if he could shoot like that. As I said, he should yeah. have been doing what he's doing, but. But Hartenstein for Golden State makes plenty of sense, even if he came off the bench, because he's a passer that can mm -hmm. find, you know, find shooters and cutters. Like, that's his MO. Mm -hmm. And he would get more opportunities to do that with Golden State. Mm -hmm. Now, on our side, uh, Wiggins would give us a legitimate 3 and D guy who could do a little bit more than 3 and D. Mm. But he would give us that legitimate small forward that we just keep coveting so much mm. and that we just don't seem to get as far as the right height and everything else. So that that would 
pay real dividends for both sides mm. if something like that. And and Golden State probably, if they wasn't looking to that deal, because I'm sure this was a hypothetical uh, scenario, it is only because they have to start creating that cap space because now you pay Draymond mm. and you know that Clay and them, Steph and, and them Draymond, coming around again. Draymond wasn't one of those years where he felt like he was old. Yeah, because Draymond's smart. Like because he been taking them cuts, pay cuts. Yeah, you had to do it because it don't matter. They don't just because you feel like you're old and what you did for him. That don't mm. mean nothing. Because look what happened with Dwayne Wade. Mm. Dwayne Wade sacrificed, sacrificed, sacrificed. So he, he did. Bring a star. Yeah. So now time comes for him to get paid, and LeBron left, and Bosh is hurt. Pat Riley, no, they let you go. You know, they let you go to Cleveland, let you go to Chicago. Oh yeah, he did say that. He you know, so that. it's not always good business wise. Yeah, you might want to win. Mm. But business wise, and, and guys know that's what it is. You might as well take that money. Mm. Now I can see if you know you're getting somebody, but when they tell you to take a little bit less, take less also in a state that has no taxes. Mm. And then time come to get paid, even though he was getting paid, but now they don't want to give you the the, 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 the max max because now they feel like you you took all these cuts. Now you're too old. So to me, take the money now while you can take it. Mm. And even if you don't never win. At least be like Patrick Ewing and just leave it all on the floor. Like mm -hmm. Patrick left it on the floor. So he, you know, so he's still a champion in a lot of people's eyes. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what Draymond to me, even though I don't think he was going anywhere, he bluffed his way to get that contract. And they probably would not have given it to him. Because mm -hmm. if you let him go, now you got a salty clay and you got a salty Steph. Mm -hmm. So once though once those guys gone, your dynasty is done. Yeah, they're gonna and it's be, hard to rebuild. They're really gonna be like the run is over. Yeah. Unless they really get pissed like that. You, you said I could do it without Draymond. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. All right, so, but that's, but, but all those are interesting. I still, if we don't forget, I want to try to have a little bit of time for that Damian Lillard thing. Mm. Um, now, this one here, I I saw an article um, two days ago. And I, and <laughs> so I said, it's worth discussing. It said, the article says that the Knicks will be a sixth place team, mm. right? So, and then we'll get into our roster of who we got as it stands right now that we so-called a sixth place team. Mm. So then I started like, 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 like saying like, who are the teams then that are supposed to be ahead of us? Mm. All right, if you want to say Milwaukee, nobody going to argue. Well, we will say Milwaukee. Mm. Um, you could kind of, if you want to say Boston, I think the Knicks can beat Boston. But if you want to just say Boston um, because of the runs that they made, mm. um, Philly, if you want to say Philly because of MB. But you could play Philly well. And then if you want to even argue Miami. Yeah, I was about to say they're going to you know, I'm Miami. saying you could argue Miami. Like, we, every, everybody felt we should have beat Miami. Yeah. I don't think there was no person felt going into that series that Miami was going to beat us. Mm. Right? And they wasn't even picked to beat us. So, that's four. Now, out of those four, two, you still can play with and Actually, three, you still can play with and beat. You could. Like, you could, you could beat Philly, Miami, and you could beat Boston. Mm. Right? Milwaukee, even though my, the way Miami beat them, like that's that still will always be debatable. Nobody's never gonna pick you over Miami. So then, who's the fifth team if we're six, right? Who's the fifth team? And I was racking my brain yesterday, just trying to like, and maybe I'm missing somebody. I'm trying to see who are they gonna say? Yeah, but who would you say? Like who? I'm trying to take even like who? Indiana. Okay, they got they got pieces, I but I don't, I don't say, say, gonna say Indiana? Toronto. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. You mm -hmm. know, I'm trying to figure out who else is um. You know, Orlando, they got little pieces, but they not ready yet. Like, Charlotte, not, who? They just you know, Brooklyn, I don't know. I don't, so, I, I didn't even, I, I mean, purposely last year, read the when article. they put us at six, it made sense. But this year, no. Because we got the same team. It ain't like we changed nobody. We actually did what we did last year. We added yeah. a piece that everybody kind of questioned. Now you see everybody tread lightly, like, DiVincenzo, uh, that would, like, he might be better than... Well, because Brunson, because Brun is because Devin Chenjo comes in with a little bit different pedigree, because Brunson, the question mark, he never had his own team to run. Mm. You know, he's always there with somebody. So he proved everybody, not everybody, but he proved a lot of us wrong that he could be a lead guard by himself. Mm. So now Devin Chenzo coming in, you're not coming in with that same pressure. Mm. You even still got to fight for your minutes, but you're not coming in with that type of pressure. Mm. So. Who who's that sixteen? If somebody else think they know, put it in there. Who could who could possibly be that sixteen? Because I think we still can flirt with fourth. We can still flirt with fourth. Yeah. You know, and if you get lucky, 
you know, maybe third, but fourth and fifth is where I think we still yeah, can end you, up. I think you, you go for it all like you did last year. Yeah, yeah. But now we're going in knowing that we got last point year, I was just saying get to the playoffs, but I say now nah, go further than that. Yeah, but you can say it. When you got a point guard that's that's durable and, and, and that's efficient, mm -hmm. now we can make those claims. Mm -hmm. So I never read the article when I saw the headline about sixth place because sometimes – it's, it's everybody's opinion, so I just said it, and I but I did want to know who was who was the who was the thing, so maybe I'll go back and find it mm. in the eyes of some of these writers. But no, we are, yeah, we could we, we could potentially be in six, and nobody would fault that. But to say it right now, hypothetically, no I other team, this, no other team in the East has done so much. Basically, just saying we just not a playing team. We are actual actual playoff team. I all right, I'll take that. If they would have said that, I'd have been right, I'll take that. But we definitely a four or five. We should have been a four or five team last year. What was we six five? Yeah, I think we was fifth, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we, so, we should be in the same spot. Yeah. If not, we should have been better. Yeah. The games we lost, we shouldn't have lost. Yeah. So the Knicks, the Knicks are they sitting pretty because all we really did was, okay, we lost Obi who didn't play a lot, which nobody wanted to do. So we pick up Divincenzo, who's going to be. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a rotation, a major rotation player. Mm. Um, and that's probably the only thing that we're going to add. That's probably the only extra uh, thing that we're going to add to our roster. Because look at, we know the starters are the same, mm. right? Brunson, Grimes, Barrett, Julius, if it stands right now, and then Big Mitch. And then Hart, Hart, Hartenstein, and DiVincenzo, those are the next three, mm. right? So that means... We still gonna basically be I'm like, okay, okay, then for depth, you're saying Jericho, Isaiah, Roby, Miles, and Brock. So that means with this lineup that we have, we're still primarily an eight and a half, nine man rotation. Mm. Which is when the Knicks started playing good when Tibbs went to that rotation. Mm. So if he starts off the season with a tight rotation, um, then then we we probably gonna get out of the gate faster. Mm. Cause we'll already, everybody will already know their roles. But the the problem is that who's gonna re, who's gonna fill Julius Randle's spot? Because that's the person that's gonna get the least minutes. That's what'll make it a nine man rotation. Mm. Because Obi averaged around eleven minutes a game, right? Sometimes he got fifteen or whatever it was, but his average. So I, we know that Tibbs at times last year he he used um, Hart and and RJ at the four. So he'll probably do that a lot this year, depending on some of the people that we brought in, mm. how they fare out. So if you don't if you don't make your mark as soon as training camp get here, mm. you could pretty much say, and that's kind of how I want him to approach it. I want him I want him training camp and preseason. If this is our team, the mother guys ain't beating nobody out. Mm. All right. Well, we ain't worried about who's fighting to get on the team. Let's go with our strength guys, get them ready, get them acclimated together, mm. and then let's 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 come out of the gate, you know, rolling. Mm. That's how I would like to see it done. But but in case of injury, somebody has to fill in that power forward. You know, spot. We picked up a uh yeah, I didn't write his name down either, but we picked up another guy that been in the league a couple of years with the Spurs and a couple of people mm. didn't play much. Um with Minnesota last year, I think it was. And I watched his highlights and he's a he's a power forward center. Mm. And when Minnesota's big guys were out, this guy did really good. Mm. So he he would be like a, a, a heart type of a player. If we had to put a no name big man in there, he'd run the floor, block shots, and he could score. Mm. So, guys like that to me, put them on your bench, and then when you need them, just put them in there and let them go. Mm. You know, no more what we did last year with Hartenstein and and with Jericho trying to fill a role. Let these let these guys play. But we are more than we. I think we're more than a sixth place team. But our rotation as it stands is not going to scare nobody on paper. Mm. But if we got some dogs that's going to go out there and play ball, mm. then I don't think nobody in their right mind could could say anything about us um, or argue with us. Okay, and then the last thing that I really wanted to talk about before, uh, is um, what would you say about, because I saw this, right, a a backcourt of Donovan Mitchell and Jalen Brunson, right? Hypothetically, would that work? Donovan Mitchell and Jalen Brunson? Yeah. yeah. That works? Because you know they, they, they keep talking about... The Knicks been playing two guards all the time anyway. Yeah, two small guards. I don't um, think we've been playing... I also saw some talk on another... Uh, article that Cleveland's going to do everything they can to try to keep Donovan Mitchell, mm. even if he asks for a trade because of 
Darius Garland is always getting injured. And when Garland got injured last year, then, you know, uh, Mitchell can't, you know, he did it. He did his thing. So they don't, they don't want to lose him, let alone lose him for nothing. Mm. They want to keep him as insurance. But we know in the NBA, when guys press to leave, they end up leaving. It's just that do the Knicks, do the Knicks now still feel that they want, that they want him for his contract. So just a lot of interesting things, little things that's been happening the past few weeks um, that I wish we was on to be able to talk about. But we Cleveland, Cleveland better come get quickly on RJ before they. <laughs> well, they yeah, they definitely would have. Well, yeah, that's that was part of the article that it would be RJ and IQ. But what does Donovan does stuff for us? But what does what does RJ and IQ do for them? I don't know, but it gives them a point guard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, Garland's point guard too. He's just a I'm score. Talking about Donovan Mitchell ain't he kind of like a point guard too. Guard? Yeah, he's a combo guard. Yeah, you know what I'm saying IQ is like a combo guard. Yeah, for us. he played point or he played two. Yeah. that's what I'm saying. With the Knicks, it's the same. Yeah, I'm not as high on Donovan. I take him, of course, but I'm not as high on him as I was last year. All right, but this is what we're gonna talk about in closing, real quick. Um, but he sure dropped the tears. <laughs> yeah, he sure enough will. I don't think nobody will cry. Um, now it was something I watched on this YouTube thing yesterday with Adrian Wojnarowski. Wol Right now, he's the voice of uh, spearheading rumors, mm -hmm. trades to be the first to get it out there. So I saw the thing with Dame, with Dame Lillard, and him and Dame Lillard don't get along because some things he wrote about Dame a few years ago, mm -hmm. and they said that the article was saying that he, that Woj, I guess for favors to get firsthand information from insiders on teams, he'll write the article on in the team's favor mm. for the teams that go along with his program, if this is all true. This is all allegedly. So um, Portland is one of the teams that he get inside information. They named a few GMs and coaches. Mm. But Portland is supposedly one of the teams that he gets inside information from. Um, and him and Dame don't get along because of some things he wrote about Dame before. So he put out, they say he puts out narratives that Dame didn't say like, you know, things like, I want to be traded to Miami or I want to, mm. you know, stuff like that to now mess up your trade value and mess up, like, try to, if Miami could have did the deal mm. with with Hero and some other people, which they was leaning towards that, he he comes out, Woes will come out and say, um, well, Miami got to have, Miami got to, uh, no, Portland got to get back way more than what they're offering. So now you're killing deals and you're telling the other side to ask for more, which will kill the deal. But I was but I was shocked to know that in his history, um, that he has deals with a lot of teams that if you're going along with my program, I talk favorably of you. And if you're not, then I badmouth your your you know, your organization and your mm -hmm. players in the press. And then they just showed a list of where all of that, you know, happened at. Mm -hmm. So I was just kind of shocked because we all look at woes up here. But then again, the other part that didn't shock me sometimes is to get up here and be the best in your craft, you got to shake some feathers underneath. Now, I didn't really think they really care about what he said. I thought he just reported the news. Like, no, nah, I mean, well, I mean, just when when you do think about it, it's not what you say, it's how you say. Mm. You know, how you speak for and against. Mm. You know, so it, it just, if you saw it, it, it would make more sense. But I don't want to sit here bad mouth and woe. Because even, best cause even what Woe would, would say, say if uh, Dame did want to go to Miami. I mean, that's not still not stopping the fact of him saying, I only want to go to Miami. But I don't think he ever said that. I mean, and if, that and if he didn't, teams like the Knicks would have been in your favor because you get back way more yeah. than what you were asking for. Yeah. Right? You're going to get rid of Dame anyway. Dame got a history of being hurt too. You know what I mean? He don't got a ring. Mm -hmm. Wait, does he make it? Does he barely make it to the playoffs, or does he? You know what I mean, like yeah, he makes it. He makes it. He every makes year. it. Just, you know what I mean? He got mellow. He just one and he two had, out. Yeah, he damn near had everybody too. So like him being traded. Nah, he never. Not really. I mean, Melo at the end of his career. I mean, I you mean, and CJ then, McCullough, you had two thirty point scores, but that was all you had. So yeah, but well, you had a center. I'm saying you still getting more Nurkic. than other players. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you still getting names that. People that can hold their own. Yeah. I used to say the same thing about John Wall and who he had over there in the Wizards. Bradley Bill. Bradley Bill. Like, now they separated, and now you see who's still playing at the same level and who not. Yeah. I mean, it's just it was just interesting, though. Um, and I'm going to pay more attention to that after this, too. I mean, we you know do, other, you're going to see calm down. That's all. You're going to see Yeah, because we see other, we see Stephen A. We see a lot of other people do it.
But being that he's at the top of the game, top of the food chain, I just thought that was something interesting. But Dame... He doesn't really give an opinion, though, so I can't really see that being... I mean, I can see him putting out bad news to put it out to be spiteful, but I can't mm. see him changing another team's mind. Like, you ain't changing the Knicks' mind. The Knicks might even give you more, and they're going to throw in somebody just because. Yeah, somebody needs to change. Like, they're going to they throw in somebody just because. Like, you know what? Yeah. Take, right, take the been, water, boy. That's been our M.O. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, All right. All right, well, right there, we're going to wrap that up. All right, and then until next time, but remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace. Peace.